In generating visuals, it is important to talk about graphics. Graphics generation in digital form in terms of production and delivery has gone a long way. In this digital age, we have to deal with computers in generating visuals. We consider photography and videography as ways to capture visuals. Generating visuals is being able to create visuals directly making use of the computer to create them and to manipulate its final form. We then have to start with the single frame or what we call as graphics. Graphics can be carried by different media. We are most familiar with graphics in print form. We see them in leaflets, brochures, newspapers, magazines, posters, and billboards. And so, let's look at the poster design and identify its parts. This will help us see that we can identify parts and groupings of any kind in the graphics and other visual works. Going through several posters, we can see that we can identify common parts or elements. The headline. The headline used as the most prominent text. It is usually the attention getting written text. It may be the brand of a commodity or the byline that they want to push. The secondary statement. Usually, secondary statement qualifies the headline. The visual the visual usually is the eye-catcher of the entire work. Sometimes it may even take the role of the headline. It says the message without words. In some works, you have just the visual and the signature or the logo. The action statement. The action statement is the part that tells the viewer what to do, like visit your family planning center, bring home this product, watch this presentation, or eat our merchandise. In some cases, the action statement is simply implied. The signature is the element that tells you where the message comes from. The logo is the visual representation of the signature. Graphics and television, however, has the element movement. The element of time is expanded and apparent movement has been integrated as seen in the TV commercials and the opening billboards of television programs. These finished products are actually a series of two-dimensional single-frame graphics. Graphics, therefore, is most often defined as two-dimensional works carrying drawings, paintings, photographs, and the written text that are meant to be eye-catchers, illustrations, and points of interest. We, however, must look at graphics as signs and symbols, just as the written words are seen. It can be denotative, which means that what is shown is exactly what it wants to bring across, like when the sign shown is simply a visual mimic of the object. If the sign shown is part of a bigger object, and it allows the viewer to complete the picture, and create meanings in their minds, then we can say that the sign becomes connotative when it does not rely on being a copy of the object or it being iconic. This sign is classified as being an index. The sign can also be altogether not looking like the object it wants to present but is somehow recognized because its meaning has been culturally constructed, which often is called as 
symbolic. When we talk of graphics and its proliferation, we can say that the fastest growing area in use of graphics is the multimedia delivered online. Delivering system is via telecommunications and the internet. Under telecommunications are delivering through phone lines, satellite, wireless, and cable transmissions. The use of internet is growing at an extremely fast pace. We see many companies, organizations, groups, and individuals creating their home pages for the web with photographs, drawings, animation, and even video clips to show the services and the products they provide. The educational institutions are also tapping the internet and telecommunication systems to deliver via distance education mode. Classifying graphics is important to be able to talk about them. Though in reality, there have been merging of uh, elements. That is why the boundaries are continuously blurring. Two types of graphics are said to dominate the multimedia. These are drawings and bitmaps. The draw type graphics, known as vector graphics, are images created by manipulating geometric shapes, straight lines, ovals, and arcs to create organic and open shapes, making graphics for PowerPoint presentations, CD-ROMs, web pages, and video productions. And uh, this means that, you know, it's having to know the terms related to the kinds of graphics that you will have to be making and integrating into your multimedia materials. When we are working on print, it is sometimes very tempting to simply just let our printer decide on, on the details of the material that you are working on. When you are going to do multimedia productions, whether they are on the disc or on the web, is often uh, that we may do most of the production phases ourselves. You may be doing a lot of uploading of the files of the web, uh, make your own graphics, take your own photographs, and shoot your own video footage you then will have to be knowledgeable of its terminology. Or somebody is going to do it for you, and if it's so, you have to still know these terms and so that it's advisable that you are familiar, really, with these terms. After mastering the tools to draw, the next step is to be familiar with colors. There is a danger that your selection of colors may cause the image to differ and to lose the original color that has been intended for the image. So it's important that you have to use what we call as safe colors. This means that you have to use colors that can be read by other computers that will eventually access the images you create. Most computers can display at least 8-bit colors. This means that 256 colors would be the, the scale of colors that you can select from. Out of these colors, there are only 216 colors that are, well, common to browsers and operating system of the different computers in the market. If the colors you choose are outside, of these common 216 colors, the browsers will then convert these colors to the nearest color of the system palette. Or what can happen is that the browser will mix several colors to attain that color that is outside the 216 common colors to approximate the common color. When creating your own color safe palette, Make use of the authoring software and choose only from these colors. We will show you the samples of the different software swatches. We shall now discuss the importance of knowing the different file formats. Knowing about them means 
knowing what is the most important format for particular purposes. Always remember that in making graphics, it is important to save the image. We must prepare where these graphics will be filed. If you're using Adobe Photoshop, automatically this saves the graphics as Photoshop files. There are ways of classifying formats. In general, JPEG is a graphic file format that stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group, which is a superior format for photographic or continuous tone images. This can capture the changes in color and gradation of tones. It is a, a cross-platform, which means that computers of any kind can view them. This format is also compressed, which means that it makes the file smaller. Its compression mode, however, creates some loss of quality in the process since there are some data that are removed from the original file image to make the file size smaller. GIF is developed by Computer Serve for online use. GIF stands for Graphic Interchange Format. It is also cross-platform and compressed. In the usual TIFF format, a graphic can be 900K. But the same graphic, when transferred to GIF, is likely to be only about 5K. GIF is preferred for non-continuous tone or flat colors. The PING format is for images or those with large areas of patent-free replacement of GIF. PING, which is commonly pronounced as PING stands for Portable Network Graphics. It is cross-platform, compressed, and lossless, just like GIF. It includes support for indexed color, grayscale, and true color images. It also provides uh, alpha channel support for transparency. The digital size of an image is measured in kilobytes megabytes or gigabytes. File size is proportional to the pixel dimensions of the image. Images with more pixels may produce more detail at a given printed size, but they require more disk space to store and may be slower to edit and print. Image resolution thus becomes a compromise between image quality and file size. Let's talk about programs to create graphics and to enhance photographs and existing graphics. Photoshop supports a maximum file size of 2 gigabytes and maximum pixel dimensions of 30,000 by 30,000 pixels per image. This restriction places limits on the print size and resolution available to an image. The number of pixels along uh, the height and width of a bitmap image. The display size of an image on screen is determined by the pixel dimension or the image plus the size and setting of the monitor. The file size of an image is proportional to its pixel dimensions. A typical 13-inch monitor displays 640 pixels horizontally and 480 vertically. An image with pixel dimensions of 640 by 480 would fill this, this small screen on a larger monitor with a 640 by 480 setting. The same image with pixel dimensions of 640 by 480 will still fill the screen, but each pixel would 
appear larger. When preparing an image for online display, for example, a web page that will be viewed on a variety of monitors, pixel dimensions become especially important because your image may be viewed on a 13-inch monitor. You'll probably want to limit the size of your image to a maximum of 640 pixels by 480 pixels. In Photoshop, for example, image pixels are translated directly into monitor pixels. This means that when the image resolution is higher than the monitor resolution, the image appears larger on screen than its specified print dimensions. The number of pixels displayed per unit of printed length in an image usually measured in pixels per inch. PPI. An image with a high resolution contains more and therefore smaller pixels than an image of the same printed dimension with a low resolution. Let's talk about bitmap. Photoshop and other paint and image editing programs generate bitmap images, also called raster images. Bitmap images use a grid of small squares known as pixels to represent images. Each pixel is assigned a specific location and color value. A bitmap image is resolution dependent. That is, it contains a fixed number of pixels to represent its image data. As a result, a bitmap image can lose detail and appear jagged if viewed at a high magnification on screen or printed at low or too low a resolution. Bitmap images are the best choice for representing subtle gradations of shades and color, for example in photographs or painted images. Drawing programs. Drawing programs such as Adobe Illustrator, for example, create vector graphics made of lines and curves defined by mathematical objects called vectors. Vectors describe graphics according to their geometric characteristics. You can move, resize, or change the color without losing the quality of the graphic. A vector graphic is resolution independent. That is, it can be scaled to any size and print on any output device at any resolution without losing the detail or clarity. As a result, vector graphics are the best choice for type and bold graphics that must retain crisp lines when scaled to various sizes. Before you scan an image, make sure that the software necessary for your scanner has been installed. To ensure a high quality scan, you should predetermine the scanning resolution and dynamic range of your image. These preparatory steps can also prevent unwanted colors cast from being introduced by your scanner. If you have problems with scanning, make sure that you are using the latest version of the appropriate scanner driver. So there are actually various ways by which you can uh, put in graphics or artwork into your web pages to enable it, um, uh, well, to enable your web page to have, um, shall we say, fancy artwork um, in one hand or something functional on the other. Um, one of the lesser known ways by which uh, that is made okay, or that is possible is through the use of an existing software th which most of us are already familiar with. So one of the lesser known programs uh, that are used or that could be used for formulating JPEG 
files is actually the Microsoft Word program. So the Microsoft Word program uh, would actually enable you to be able to, well, draw objects, okay? And later on, you may transfer those objects and convert them into JPEG files. So how do you do that? Well, for one, uh, you just take the basic drawing objects that are available in the Microsoft Word program and um, you could perhaps make your logo or design any form of artwork okay, using um, the boundaries that are set to you by Microsoft Word and then uh, you then paste your finished work or your grouped objects onto um, the uh, paintbrush program and then save it as a JPEG file in that case so that's one way and another thing that um, may be used would be the clip art function of Microsoft Word so uh, those clip arts are not in JPEG format but you can make them uh, into uh, well convert them into JPEG format or bitmap format uh, to do that it's the same thing so from Microsoft Word you just paste them onto your document then after that um, copy and paste again in paintbrush okay and then um, just simply convert or save it as a jpeg file so it's as simple as that so using microsoft word you can actually make logos such as this one based on your drawing objects so you have under that you have draw okay. select objects auto shapes line arrow, rectangle, oval, text box, among others. So this is equivalent, okay, our existing logo is equivalent to any of these drawing objects that were grouped together. After which, okay, uh, to actually paste your finished drawing object onto paint and save it as JPEG, all you have to do is to go to the edit program or command look for copy then select copy then go to start again look for the program for paint which is under the accessories function the paint command should be down here then click on that at this point we are now in um, the paint program so you have a lot of commands here file edit view image colors and help the only command that you need is edit then paste once you have pasted your drawing object all you have to do is to go back to file which is the first command then look for the command save as so new open save save as okay. click save as okay. then under that put in your file name be aware of the fact that you can actually save this in a lot of formats Okay, such as monochrome, 16 color bitmap, 256 color bitmap, among others. In this case, the most common type of file uh, format would be the JPEG, file interchange format. Okay. Then, after you have picked that out, press save. And you now have a logo that is in JPEG format. Another program that is, uh, well, not so well known but would be as essential for uh, creating graphics or editing pictures, your existing pictures in, um, in the computer would be the ULEAD Photo Express 
program. So, You Lead Photo Express is uh, usually comes uh, alongside other forms of hardware, no? um, probably like your digital camera or sometimes it could come with a scanner uh, like the Canon products would have You Lead Photo Express. In any case, you can avail of it um, uh, outside of the hardware by simply buying it in the nearest computer shop or software shop. Now, the Ulead Photo Express generally works as an editing software. So, basically, uh, it's extremely difficult to make pictures from, from scratch. However, uh, what you can do is to put uh, existing pictures in a mosaic uh, type of pattern and then save them as a totally new look or a totally new picture or graphic. So, in essence, it has or it shares the same... Uh, features and functions as Adobe Photoshop okay although um, again uh, it's really more for editing existing pictures rather than for creating uh, unique uh, or uh, singular pictures but uh, it's still one viable option so this is the you need photo express program so basically it has four command functions okay help view edit and file so to get any picture that you would need okay, remember that this is an editing software and not a um, file construction software all you have to do is to go to file and look for the picture that you would need okay. from there we can look for the logo that we originally made earlier using the word program which is now in jpeg format Apply, drag. Okay. Uh, you can change the color of this to reflect your particular taste. You can also um, transform the, um, the text to acquire some perspective. Or slant the text. Other things that you could animation is putting life into inanimate objects, which means that the elements of movement and time come into play. We create movement by applying the principle of persistence of vision. Persistence of vision means that an object when put in front of your eyes and is taken out. The image of the object still is seen by your eyes a few seconds more even if the object has been taken out in front of you. Seeing the image a few seconds more is what we mean by persistence of vision. So when a series of uh, still photographs uh, would be shown and each one is shown for a few seconds without blanks of course in between it will be seen as a continuous flow of images so a single drawing is called graphics but when drawings are shown sequentially then we can say we see apparent movement then this is known as animation there are many animation programs that uh, you can use. The programs available for animation are PC Animate, ULead, um, Lightwave, 
and Poser. The common programs such as PowerPoint and Photoshop, for example, can also be used since here you deal with frames and if you simply put one slide after another, there will be continuity produced and therefore the principle of persistence of vision will once again apply. The editing program of uh, Adobe Premiere, for example, can also be used for animation. The most uh, used uh, 3D uh, animation programs would be 3D Studio Max and Maya. But uh, Maya is uh, the high-end program that is used by producers of animation and special effects for mainstream cinema. The most uh, common animation program used for the web is Flash. So uh, what I want you to do now is to watch this animation for the opening billboards of a television program produced by UP Open University. What's up sa barangay? 